following presentation is part of the Beyond the Blast Doors Network. is up everyone this is your boy the cannon junkie and this is another edition of the bomb bad cast i am here just chilling on a uh, uh saturday afternoon right bomb bad saturdays with my boy and our other bo- uh, uh, my boys my boys scotty boy. j row and eric codiman what is up scotty and eric <laughs> My boy, <laughs> my oh, boy. <laughs> what a great line! The great, amazing yeah. line. It's like it really automatically great. holding possession of them just instantaneously. Like my boy, what's up, Bombad fam? Yeah, Bombad <laughs> E in video. How cool was this? Bombad E in video form. Fantastic, crazy. So, it's about time. It is about to. I was telling telling yeah. you guys earlier. That it's about time people finally saw the uh, beautiful, handsome white Jesus that is um, Mr. Eric Cotterman. So it's young, young good to Qui-Gon. finally have you on. Young Qui Gon people, yeah, I appreciate y'all. Young Qui Gon, of course. No, well, this this we okay. Let me explain what what happened with this. I was on my way to a Chinese restaurant when I thought of this episode. Because I kid you not, I was like getting takeout. I was starving, and I just got off the phone with him. And I'm sitting here like, "Oh my god, we had the bomb bad build up with Eric, right?" And <laughs> and we're like, "Let's have him back on to then do um, the you know once this arc is done, the Siege of Mandalore arc, because we can talk about the parallels." I'm pretty sure the first episode had just came out, right. so I was like already on my mind, right? And um, of course, I get the food. Pretty sure I put y'all in a group text. And did y'all were we already in a group text? I don't remember. Or oh, no? we were already in a Maybe. group text. We well, okay, I don't know. We were, okay. That depends. Was this like pre-quarantine? You were going no, no. To this is during, this Chinese is during food quarantine. or yeah. This is during quarantine. So it's like okay, yeah. Then I think we already. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We had group chat, man, for a while now. Like we were, we were us, and then we had to kick Paul out actually of the group chat, just because that was. Yeah, yeah. He was really upset. Yeah, he was uh, super upset. He was a little. Yeah, dude. Wait. Speaking of Paul, did I did I send the screen? Look at this. Wait, I'll show the camera first. Literally, he posted this today, like moments ago. It says, oh, "With man. my son, Darth Maul, doing some shopping." <laughs> How amazing is that? How amazing is that? I don't know. I thought it was hilarious. Who's he with? Is he with Daisy Ridley? Who is he with? No, he's, no, he's, with, his, he's with his son. Oh, okay. Oh, that's not yeah. Daisy Ridley then. No, it's I know his son was Daisy Ridley. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I, I'm so glad to have you back on because of this discussion we're about to have. And I guess we can get right into it. Um, What we're discussing today essentially is what we refer to and what has been dubbed the Siege of Mandalore. Only because... Oh, wait, no. I guess Siege... Siege out of the episode. Right down there. It is the Siege of the Sith. Now, it's a weird thing, but Jerry found an edit of the Siege of Mandalore mixed in with Revenge of the Sith. And so I thought it would be easy to make the title the Siege of the Sith because we're really discussing... It's kind of like our very last After Arc show for Clone Wars ever. We, as we think, um, in terms of now, uh, because we don't know if there's going to be more Clone Wars. That whole article that came out, that's like, oh, we'll, we'll do some more. Uh, but what I'm trying to say, to, I need to stop beating around the bush. We're going to kind of talk about the tie-ins between this last arc of Clone Wars with Revenge of the Sith, because there are some massive ones, some really weird sequel trilogy stuff, too, that is also involved with it. But, um, yeah, I, I, Jerry, tell us about the Siege of the Sith, because you've actually watched the cut of it. 
Well, Siege of the Sith, it's a little like it reminded me of of like watching the uh extended editions of Lord of the Rings. Yeah. With like all the appendices and everything, but also mixed with um that four hour version of Watchmen that I've never watched. My friend like got, was gifted it uh, years ago for a birthday and he still hasn't watched it. So shout out to my friend, Phil, who I'm betting t- like 12 years later, still hasn't watched uh, that Watchmen director's cut with like the black, uh, the, the whatever the pirate cartoon is mixed in. Uh, but that's kind of what it reminded me of, but it was, it's amazing how, beautifully edited together it was uh in fact i was watching a little bit of it i had to watch it in parts because it's like almost four hours long i mean this is a monster it's right long. it's yeah it's huge and uh i had to uh, i watched a, a little bit of it with uh my lovely wife and child and uh it was funny allison was telling me she's like if you're not looking at it you can't tell that it's like two different things like it, it just sounds yeah. like the same thing. Like it's all mixed together. It's it's just the same movie. It looks like you're watching. So, mm-hmm. anyway, um, yeah, I don't know, man. There were there were parts, especially the way they did Order sixty six, and mm-hmm. how they had uh, the scene of Mace confronting Palpatine. Like he's got Palpatine down. Anakin's got to make his choice. You hear that come through when like Ahsoka's having her vision and stuff right before or 66, you know, happens of course. Mm -hmm. And man, the way they cut that together, they showed more of the Ahsoka part, honestly. Yeah. That was was kind of beautiful. And it really, the first time it hit me, um, or the first time I watched it, it just was like raw emotion, dude. Just like, like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, yeah. I think I was actually still watching with Allison and uh, Eleanor. And so I was just like, <laughs> I'll be okay. I'm Let's just eat lunch. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, dude, it was I insane. Chance, but I had a chance to skim through it. And um, I even noticed that they did a really good job of cutting where George would have cut yes. in, the, uh, dude. in the scenes of Clone Wars doing like the swipes and stuff. Oh, it was like really uh, tasteful. How they yeah, did that. They, it was. It it almost made like it, it kind of did bring that aspect of George with like like there was one wipe I never seen Star Wars they did and it was like a from the corner wipe and I'm mm. like that actually kind of worked if they ever were to really utilize that wipe which is interesting we could do a whole episode on wipes by the way you could <laughs> then you really you I really mean, could they used they not used <laughs> a corner wipe. I've never, they've done side, they've done wipes, I believe, from the top, but I've never seen it from the bottom going up. I was like, didn't George even use like the circle ones? Yeah, like, could he use the small <laughs> circle ones? The one that he's done circle out, circle yeah. in, and he's done uh, like the, what, ed- it was, I was watching something, Dude. I'm like, what a weird cut, but they did the literal like, the like the four circles, and they did yeah, like, I'm talking about. that one, yeah. yeah. So weird. Pretty cool, I'm sure. It's so yeah. 70s, man, yeah. I love it. Dude, there the, there's a great one in Force Awakens where like it's like Hux and um Kylo are talking and mm-hmm. he goes like about like find that droid and then like it goes like circles out from Hux's face to like a yeah. circle of dust in the desert and like Finn yeah. looking for water or whatever, you know? It's it's yeah. amazing. I love those little like weird wipes and stuff. But anyway, clever. But anyway, um, they they yeah. did do that well. They did do that so well of when to cut or to put things like I don't know I I I love that part of editing because it's so dis, it's such a big important thing to do and like there was some hard cuts too and 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 mm-hmm. the actual thing literally just cut to the next moment whatever it would have been it could have been um I don't know I I I was super impressed with the actual edit itself and I didn't get to watch the full thing I probably did the same thing as you to just skim through it and um. Yeah, I guess the whole idea of this episode. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, the whole idea of this episode was really kind of to talk about how they all tied in together. And has your opinion, Jerry, of like the Clone Wars changed at all because of Revenge of the? I'm sorry, vice versa. Has Revenge of the Sith changed at all because of that final arc in Clone Wars? I think yes, hundred percent. Yeah, even just watching it, like every week when it was coming out, you know. 
uh, we knew it was going to be, I mean, it hasn't been edited into a movie officially, but no. <laughs> you, you know, like there are guys out there on YouTube, like people on YouTube. We talked, we've talked about, uh, what was it with the ad at, or not ad at chat. We were talking about, uh, with, uh, Hello Greedo about how there's almost yeah. like this punk rock underground movement of fan edits and stuff. And I think there's going to be like, this is going to be the next like big fan edit wave is this thing, dude. Mm -hmm. But like watching that, like all cut together, but also just watching it week to week, like from the first episode, I already had like Canon completely changed. And I, I think my favorite of the, if of the chopped up episodes, like of the, just, you know, the four episode arc is that first one. Yeah, with Anakin um, and Obi Wan and, and them coming back in, that I think is my favorite one, even more than the duel and the second one, and then Order sixty six and the escape. Like, it's all good. It's all good. But there's sure. something about those first, those first few, where it's like there was like canon established for. Uh, the prequels for the sequels for rebels oh, yeah. for Mandalorian. That first episode had the most Mandalorian flavor too, to me. Oh, totally. like, like there was so much of that that I was like, okay, now this is a perfect bridge. That episode sure. to me felt like the bridge that connected everything that we have so far. Yeah. Honestly, it felt like, well, okay. Everything just fell into place for me all of a sudden, you know, you've got, to even down to what's his name uh wearing like the the mandalorian armor and stuff um uh the the, oh, the uh, puppet ruler uh, yeah what's his name i'm a cannon junkie just watched kill. um ah uh, oh, son of a gun well yeah that guy uh that guy he had two like two like old shit in the chest in mcgee yes yeah. yes yes he, he, he had like yes. Regal Mando armor with like the gold plates and stuff. Oh my god, it was beautiful. Yeah, he makes it was so, like, that was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> but I think even movie. after that first episode, I was never gonna watch Revenge of the Sith the, the same ever again because that's where that's literally where Anakin and Obi Wan were right before they flew off to save mm -hmm. Palpatine. And mm -hmm. um, I oh, also really, really love that little back and forth between uh, Ahsoka and Obi-Wan. Yes. Like I identify with my girl Ahsoka so much, just like mm -hmm. the whole thing about like, okay, so I had kind of lost faith with the Jedi. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I was reminded recently of why, of what the Jedi really stand for, what we should stand for. And you guys are just going to fly off because we got to save the political leader because he, oh, he needs us. So we can't help these people who are in need the whole yeah. thing where like, and then Obi without just that. I love the exchange of Obi-Wan going, that's not fair. And mm -hmm. Ahsoka's cold stone cold line. The truth hurts, baby said, uh, what was it? Uh, um, I wasn't trying to be. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Girl. Oh, that was amazing. Oh my god. It's good. Dude. And that 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 moment was pretty awesome because you see so many things set up from that point on. Like the fact that also kind of go back a little bit, Obi-Wan saving Commander Cody from that missile, you know, and then Anakin having his Luke Luke Skywalker moment on crate. There's so many like true parallels. Before we I, I thought about this just for a second, because we all have varying opinions. Like we really do. Your favorite episode from this arc, and Jerry just said his. Jerry, yours was the first one, right? Yeah, I I think it is. Um, even going back okay. through, there's moments in each one. There's so much good stuff throughout. Oh, yeah. But there was so much good jam packed into that first episode. Sure. Uh, two amazing action set pieces as well. So yeah. What about you? Um, mine's the third one. Yeah. Yeah. Third arc. Yeah, it's just is is what we were promised. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. I was super super hyped, and I, you know, it was one of those things that we knew. At, you know, after the first episode, we knew where we were. Yeah, but it's you didn't know how they were going to address something. So first of all, I was super geeking out. Oh, totally. When they did the uh, hollow 
uh, call between all the Jedi. Oh. And they did it shot for shot. So for, good. From Revenge of the Sith. I went back and watched it. Literally the same exact. It's about as close as they can get. Yeah. But it was pretty much every single shot was the same. And then it ends. And then Mace turns and starts talking to Soka. Yeah. And he's like, you know, oh. I heard you did well on your mission or whatever. Yep. That was the first big deep out moment for me. And then just that hearing awesome. her, her hearing the whole turn, I guess. Yes. yes. What is Anakin's dark deeds? Yep. Mm-hmm. Like everything from that moment that was done so tastefully. And then the fact that they were playing that track as she was escaping. Oh, I was just like, I know what's going on. This you is know, so great. If I'm not mistaken, does that episode. No, I think it's the fourth one. The fourth one starts with Qui Gon's funeral and Padme's funeral theme. Oh, really? Ooh. See, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, yeah, it's brutal. Uh, maybe. Yeah, it starts with that. But, but no, that. God, I think it's weird. I think it honestly depends on what episode hits you the most. That one hit you the most. It hit me pretty hard too. I was crying. Katie could tell you she was like, "Oh my god, you wouldn't stop." Oh, dude. And then uh, it was like I was. That, I don't know. That could hit me. That one hit me. That one hit me emotionally too. It may like I, yeah. I, I may really love. There's there's a lot of just fun stuff in that first episode for me. But dude, yeah. I mean, uh, do we want to get into some of that? emotional well, punch I, there. I want to say one thing because I Go thought it. it's cool that we all have different opinions because mine, mine was the one we just watched, the Phantom Apprentice. Thought that was amazing. Like Maul being so in tune to everything for the longest time, everyone blamed him as being a crazy person, you know, right, and the fact right. that he was so in tune to the whole grand scheme and him and Ahsoka's parallels. We're, I know we're going to get into that later, but like, Something about that episode because we had we literally had just watched it just to talk about it and like there's just so many small things the concept of the Phantom Apprentice which I want to get into as well that's a that's a that's a dense thing to discuss because I don't know it it there's a lot of payoff to watching the series in that episode with Maul being back with Ahsoka being abandoned all of that is brought up so many times and you know yeah it, it's huge the nice thing about these four episodes is like. You have a friend who likes Star Wars and they haven't gone into all like the deeper stuff. I, I would feel confident enough to be like, go watch these last four episodes. It'll change you. And if you like them, go go back and yeah. watch everything. And yeah. you know, if anyone had like an if anyone was like, Well, you shouldn't do that. Mm-hmm. That's how Star Wars has been watched like since the dawn of its existence. Yes, exactly. Like, you know what happened, and then go back and see how it plays out. Um I think you can enjoy it on a a, a very base layer i mean i think y'all said it like it's it's so funny it's almost like dave redeeming the movie that they made yes it's, it's like, like should have done like, a show and then end it with a movie it's like and I, I i've read a lot of people have been going back and they're they're seeing the movie differently oh totally. now that the show, i might go try it myself but it's almost like dave was like look at what we've done yeah look at look at this journey we've all gone on yeah. together and uh, for me, the thing Clone Wars didn't change. Revenge of the Revenge of the Sith is still my favorite movie. Of course, this did this did nothing to like heighten that or lower it. Mm-hmm. To be honest, mm-hmm. it just made me realize that there's like so much story still left in the Clone Wars. Oh, yeah. or the prequel era. You don't have to go specifically Clone Wars. I hope that Disney keeps us in this timeline. Yeah, at some oh, yeah. some way or the other, it could be within the Clone Wars. It could be when Ahsoka leaves. Yeah, like it really could, could be anything. That's another thing. It's almost like the first two arcs were like their own season. Yeah, it is so crazy. It is. You can almost call like the last four episodes season seven point five if you really yeah. want to. You're not wrong, but um, real. It was heavy. Everything yeah, yeah. was heavy. It was the first time Clone Wars, and it's so weird because I talked to another friend, my friend Richard, about it, and I was like. I love where it took me. I was like shocked the whole time. He goes, "Well, I really wasn't shocked because I knew no one would die, and that's okay." You don't have to know anyone that dies, but like how they did it, dude. It's just like Revenge of the Sith when it came out. How George executed it was the most important part, and mm-hmm. the fact that Ahsoka had her moments, and then even Maul had his moments, Rex had his moments. Everything was so tastefully done. I don't know. I'm I've, I'm just impressed that Dave really pulled it off. And of course, my my big thing is no one says anything negative about it. No mm-hmm. one, no one, and there's nothing to say negative about it because he did it so well. He did it the way probably George would have done it, honestly. Probably the most let's this is gonna be bad, but this is the most George stuff released during the Star Wars era. 
Yeah, like on Disney during the Disney era. So. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, it is so George. Just like I'd say that yeah. the cut, all of it. I don't know. It's weird. Like it, it did feel so very did. George. It was. Yeah. It was self-referential in the the right way. Yeah. And um, I don't know. Like I I'm just stuck on the whole. Like I I understand. Like you're you're right. It is very heavy and all that. Mm-hmm. And um, I know like the thing with prequels that people don't like is the whole, well, you know, it, if it's characters, we know grow up or we know nothing happens to them. I'm like, why does everything have to be about if someone lives or dies? You know, I want to see someone's yeah. story, you know, like what's the emotion that's attached to it. And um, I mean, it's cool. If you, but I just, I don't know. There, there's so much in this and Eric, just a point to what you were saying earlier, like, you could this the way they made this you could have someone watch this first for sure but it like it is something that rewards you for as much as you've seen that's what i love about this whole thing is it's so accessible but it is so rewarding and that's what these should be you know you should be able to come in at any point and Mm kind of get where it's going but then then be able to go back and then like yeah Whoa, because okay. You'll wow. say, Maul, wait, I thought he's been dead. Well, I don't understand. Mm-hmm. Then you can go back to the Maul arc and be like, oh, this makes more sense. Because there is so much way, because you'll watch Ahsoka and be like, why, who is this? Let me know more about this person. Because by this point, Ahsoka is so intriguing. Everything about her. Oh, Everything dude. about her is so cool. And and like the fact that she is not a Jedi and, you know, I'm no Jedi. Oh, oh it's just so, it's, and also it gives credence to Rebels too, in every way. Yeah. Like the, like, Troy this past week we also watched the um what's the the big arc in season two of uh the two episode arc um Twilight of the Apprentice yes we watched that together we watched that Friday night and when we watched it we kept yeah. noticing so many parallels like Maul and Ahsoka are not on bad terms in that I mean they have a little they have the quarrel towards the end of it but the whole time they're like there's no animosity there which is really weird and I would love to see yeah. that because that relationship is one of the things I want. I really want to kind of deep dive. Yeah, no, um, it's weird. I think it's this is a fun argument to have. But what is Dave's greatest achievement, Ahsoka or Maul? <laughs> wow! You could because, almost say that that that's like George's like take two. Like he was like, oh okay, yeah. let's do with with Maul. But uh, I don't know, dude. Because you make Maul from just like the stoic you know, evilly evil dude. And then you turn him into the super complex character. But by the time you're watching him hang in the air and he's screaming, you feel bad. Dude, you like, feel it. And that's a good point. Yeah. They have this cool, it's almost like they have this really cool. It, and you know, it's like poetry. It rhymes. They have like an, they have the Vader and Luke kind of characteristics, but also that Ben and Ray, mm-hmm. or I guess Kylo and Ray. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll accept the Ben and Ray. Yeah. Well, there, there, there was one part of Clone Wars where they're like kind of close. Oh, no, that was with Rex. Yes. There was one part with Rex. I'm like, please don't kiss Rex. No. <laughs> Dude, no. Okay. If we're talking about parallels between Ben and Ray, the yeah. whole Maul and Ahsoka right before their duel where like he's mm-hmm. – do you want to talk about that? Yeah. Let's the do whole – uh, that's, what, that's what sold me on this arc because I knew they were going to do it. And I knew they were going to every like, of course, rent. We knew Order sixty six. We knew Ahsoka would have to face some crazy stuff. That was the moment. I'm like, they totally had me there. Yeah. Like what? Like the yeah. fact that he sends her arm, and the way Maul handles everything, it's so amazing and nonchalant. He literally looks at Bo-Katan and goes, "Better go handle that." Like, yeah, <laughs> like, okay, like don't stay on my account. <laughs> don't stay. You on see, my like account. the people like sitting like Mall Challenge or whatever. Like, there's yeah, been, like, posting <laughs> pictures of them like sitting That's on awesome. like. Uh, it's but, pretty great, Maul, but like, I, dude, that one of the greatest things that's happened in Clone Wars. Oh, totally, is, you know, totally. I agree, Jay. What do you want to say? Uh, well, uh, Jack is back, and he's on video oh, now. You. So there you go, buddy. There you go. You gotta get over the lower <laughs> third. There you go. Um, dude, uh, just the whole, where they're, where they're talking and he's like, join me. And he's got his hand out like that. And then the window explodes and the debris and, and yeah. the, uh, ash and like just all of that like, comes through and it's floating in the air. How last Jedi throne room scene was that? 
I mean, it was. that whole, yeah. you can't tell me that that wasn't like a parallel between that, man. Like that, that a hundred percent is like here, the dark side are telling the light side are like, come What's with me. Down? I know what you're going yeah. through. They're like, yeah, they are like almost like soulmates, not in like a romantic way, like yeah. Ben and Ray, but just but still like two know. people like going through something so uh similar yes like mm-hmm. i know how you feel help me stop it yes is- well the the concept of the phantom apprentice something else just clicked there you're gonna like this the phantom apprentice that's the name of the title of the episode obviously but it means so much because you think oh the phantom apprentice mall and you say well wait a second Wait a second. That could be Anakin because that was the intention the whole time. But it just dawned on me. It could almost even be an Easter egg for Ahsoka. Because if you watch the movies, Ahsoka is essentially the Phantom Apprentice. You don't see her. You know what I mean? That yeah. is that is a pretty okay. much Vader's well, secret apprentice. Right. So, so yeah, that's really cool. That's uh, weird, huh? That is, that, is so, that is something that they've done really well post-George. Is yeah. having like the... I don't know. I, the best part I can come up with is like a triple entendre. Yeah. With these like titles, like even the sequel trilogy movies have like multiple layers behind them. It's not just one. Yeah. One uh, concrete meaning. Yes. Which is great. Um, and to Jerry's point, this throne room thing, it's like it rhymes with everything else, but they're like turning the, the dial up a little bit every time. Mm-hmm. Cause like even visually, like the wreckage between Ben and Ray, mm-hmm. like, it's like, you know, it's flaming, it's but, fire, like, yeah. but like they're in space. So, you know, they're not going to break the window. No. But like they literally shattered the window. Yep. Uh-huh. I've been trying to figure out what that window is at the end. Like what, what the, Oh, when I guess Paul... just like, I guess, well, or I guess at the end too, of that episode, which oh, is like looking up, looking up to the sky. Mm. I don't know. It's, there's something there. I haven't put my Ooh. finger on it, but I guess maybe just like Ooh. a crack in the system or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Ooh. But, Eric. Yeah, but that's that's he, Dave Filoni with man. George Lucas. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is the new George. So how beautiful uh, is that shot? Sorry, that last shot of that episode where like she's looking up and then you see the shot of her with like the city beneath her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was so cinematic, man. All it of was. that whole that fight underneath whatever platform that was. Yeah. Man. That's just, that's the thing. Like this. That that explanation you kind of you know broke into it, it is weird because she does look up into it, and then you can tell something does happen Light. in her face, where she's like, "What just happened?" And I think if I can interpret it, I think it's when Palpatine literally is like He's telling him, "Yeah, like I am, you know, I can save her. I have the pack and save her." You know that whole moment in the in the hallway. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like this Clone Wars really does just give Maul such an important thing, you know. Like Maul at this point, it almost make it almost doesn't make sense to why he's even there. I mean, I haven't read the comic, but like it, to have him be so pivotal in this moment is not only a testament to all of Clone Wars, but to what Maul represents being the Phantom Apprentice. He's not the Phantom Menace. He is the apprentice to that person. He is the one. He is the one that is going to oh. obviously wanted to change the tide of the war. And yeah. it really could have happened. And one thing I think is so important is that Dooku and Maul both straight up are like, this is what is happening. <laughs> Listen. And each time the Jedi's hubris fails them, what did they not do? Listen. They don't listen. Yeah. They're like, I don't believe you. It's crazy. You're too busy. Like Mace Windu's too busy thinking of uh, sassy like comebacks to Soka because yes. he's still butthurt about her leaving the order. Yes. Yes. yes you yeah. back. Hmm. It's it's ridiculous and like a little Padawan. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's crazy. Like, uh, yeah, Dooku's like straight up says, "Like, what if I told you that this that in the whole Republic was run by a lord?" Yes, it's like no, I believe you. That's we would so we would have known. That. That's yeah. the thing. The yeah. Jedi would have known that they would have felt that darkness, and they don't. Mm-hmm. That's the best part of it. And then even Ahsoka's like. How dare you? Like, well, dude, she even falls trapped because she goes, I know Anakin. Yeah. And it's like, mm, do you? The thing is, but what's crazy is, um, this is an interesting one because Clone Wars, I think for a lot of people has like validated Anakin's turn. Yes. Cause how it's like gradual, with super like, gradual, but Ahsoka knows about him being with her, but I guess I don't, 
and my Clone Wars knowledge is a little rusty, I will admit, but I don't remember if he ever talks to her about losing his mother. I don't know. So I guess Do you know, Jerry? I don't think okay. that they deal with the loss of the mother in the Mortis arc, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, right, right. Because, I mean, he has the whole vision of his mother. Uh, the, darn the other two darn brother. They're passed out. Yeah. They don't remember it. And then they all wake up yeah. with amnesia anyway. Right. Which well, is so interesting. <laughs> that's I love the Mortis arc, man. I don't care what you say. That's such a good yeah. arc. But, um, you know, you're, you're mentioning that she knows of, of – uh, Anakin and Padme's relationship, that's actually from Galaxy of Adventures. Oh. That stuff. A that's a Galaxy of Adventures that. drop. Because I remember the that. day that happened going like, wait, what? She knew yeah. the whole time? I mean, it's it's funny because it's funny because this whole time we're like, how did no one know? I mean, yeah. where's Anakin going all the time? You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. how do they spend, do they never spend time together and stuff? And then you find out from that that Ahsoka knows and in the beginning of this new final season, the Bad Batch no, are that great part <laughs> where he's talking and Rex knows. Yeah. And Obi Wan's Obi -Wan. like, tell Padme I said hi. Like, yeah. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think that okay. Means I guess I won't tell the Jedi that you're sexting a senator or anything, but okay, whatever. You know? I, I think the movie did a pretty good job of like indicating that Obi Wan knew. Yeah. When he's like, um, yeah. Father, isn't he? Anakin's I love that Anakin's the father, isn't he? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, I just kind of want to bring up Obi Wan now because now it, it just hit me that moment where she, where she, like Ahsoka's face is incredible. Where and you pointed it out whenever um, Obi Wan's like he killed Count Dooku, and we would have gotten all the information for him. He would have told us, you know, obviously. And then, that was a great. It's like what Anakin? And like yeah, and the fact that it was Palpatine, I was like, dude. It, you know, and mm -hmm. he pushed him to the edge to do it. Oh, it's so killer. Well, like, good. man, Maul talking about how he's long been groomed, like the whole yes, time. Like this. So awesome. so talking about that, how dirty grooming feels to begin with, just like, ooh, but like, just, I know. Ugh. Then you see him that. in Phantom Menace, though, like putting yep. his hand on that 10 year old boy's shoulder, like, we'll watch your career with great interest. Great interest stay away yep. from him. You yeah. Stay away from him, you dirty politician. I'm telling you. That's why I love two so. That's why I love the Phantom Apprentice so much because it did something I did not expect. Yeah, which was yeah. a mall straight up like, y'all. I know, I know everything about this. Like, mm -hmm. I know what's going to happen, and I think that's what made it so cool. And his, him, I don't know. Like, Maul also like kind of hyped up the Mandalorians before that battle too. And then there's that line that completely parallels the Mandalorian, which is crazy. He says, "Uh, you know." We look at us. We're hiding in the gutters. You know, I want y'all to feel like warriors. You're going to be warriors, and like, yes. what happens? What happens? The siege of Mandalore. Obviously, something fails after it. The night of a thousand tears. Like we, yeah, we don't know yet. So. Drop it. I, I think it's, night of a thousand tears doesn't come till after Rebels. Honestly, I think uh, that's yeah, in the middle uh, of the original trilogy, man. You think it's the Empire that like. I Do think because the Mandalorian, it's the Empire that I don't know it? because they're all mad he's helping Imperials. Remember he was, or he was a, uh, what was he was? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. the, the bounty was for. They're Imperial. in control right of all the Beskar and stuff, and like when we leave yeah. them in Rebels, they're like, all right, hey, we're kind of scattered, but we're good. Remember, you know? like we're, we're solid. You know, Bo-Katan's got the the yeah, dark saber. Now, okay, now we're getting into different stuff, but, <laughs> but no, it's, it's still, no, that's part of it. That's the thing. It, that's the dude, thing with the Siege uh, of Mandalore. It set up so this added many, so much to everything. So it, much to everything. Saying, dude, that's a great point. I did not think about it earlier because it closed so many doors, but mm. damn well it did open a ton more. Like I uh, yeah. so good. So good. I think we're going to get the Night of a Thousand Tears maybe just in Mandalorian. But I really sure. do. I've thought this whole time. I'm like, that's I think that is after Rebels. That's like a new hope here. Like I think, like after a new hope, they're yeah. like pissed off that they blew up their death ball, and they're like, "Let's mm -hmm. go, let's go kick some dogs and stuff, man. Yeah. Like turn yeah. over some, let's turn over like some uh, some outhouses and stuff." The you know, like, just for some stuff. Would that be a would that be a flashback then? Yeah, it would be. But half the they're day, like just striking out against the entire galaxy. They're like you do not mess with us. So why yeah. go after? Why wouldn't you go after this warrior race who's like yeah, starting to fight back, you know? 
Right. Oh, Night man, of a Thousand crazy. Tears, man. It's going to suck. Well, Jerry, I, I kind of want to bring this back up real quick because it's it's kind of interesting because new Disney, new Disney, new Star Wars is tying in with old Star Wars, which yeah. this is the weirdest combination of it all. And there's a lot of parallels throughout this arc alone, that reference Rise of Skywalker, that reference TLJ, the reference Rogue One, even. Yes. Solo, we can drive in freaking Voss. What? How sweet was that? That was so tasty. That was Cannon that. Junkie. Like, that was like straight up IV yeah. in the arm Cannon Junkie. Oh, it was. Because, Are you kidding me? And like, it had the, the, uh, the Black Sun leader too from the earlier uh, Clone Wars episode. Yes. Sorry, yeah. Andy. Sorry, Andy and um, uh, Pete Gosh. and guys. It, it's yeah. it's not Shizor. I'm sorry. It's like some other dude with an. He's a big buff lizard. But it might yeah. maybe maybe he changes his name later. Who knows? You know. Um, maybe. Maybe. But, it's not but Shizor, anyway, so but come anyway, at me. The, uh, the 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 drill into the arm like that that moment oh was gosh. so like solos and. One of my favorites, and like it for real was like seeing him, and he was just doing the same Dryden Voss thing, standing right well, there, and then it just and cuts like we out. got the drop, the name drop of Crimson Dawn in the last yep. arc, the Ahsoka yep. arc, right? Mm -hmm. And to see him come from, and I've read that uh, that the uh, the comic book of how he gets yeah. from Palpatine's vices devices to like where he is there, yeah, and uh, it's essentially him basically he just he. Flexes his underworld connection muscles, right? Yeah, and like he's like he calls his buddies, he gets out and stuff, and like the whole thing that you, you want me to spoil it for you, or do you know what yeah. it's uh, what it is? No, please, because I mean, for our listeners, if you haven't read it yet, it's a little. Past <laughs> if you haven't read that, uh, uh, was it uh, Son of Dathomir? Um, yep. Great arc. It was like one of the last things. Um, the comics, right? It was, it was the was last thing Dark Horse did before uh, everything went over to Disney, <clears throat> but. Uh, it basically Palpatine's plan. He's like, I have a, other pl uses for you or whatever. The use was to get Darth Maul's mother, Mother Talzin, yeah. to find out that that is his mom, uh, to basically come out of the shadows. And it's it's basically Pal basically Palpatine kills Mother Talzin, yeah, and gets her out of the way. That was the whole purpose of that. Yeah, and then. Maul gets taken away by his underworld buddies, like the Black Sun, the Pikes, mm -hmm. and all that. And then starts Crimson Dawn, apparently. So, so cool. There you go. And then well, here we have him now. Now we just need to know how he like ends up like with nothing on Malachor. I know. That is that the looks... story I want in make, hashtag make solo two happen, the Disney Plus series. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Like yeah, show I, I hope it's Kira. I hope Kira yeah. just like maroons him there i thought i think it's very evident that uh, they have plans or had plans or will continue to have plans for maul right mm -hmm. it's and it's it's weird I, i've talked to scott about this several times and i'm cool with this fact but it's almost like star wars is getting into like comic book territory yeah. where like a dead oh, character real. is still alive yeah in our minds yeah a character yeah. that we know exactly when he dies how he dies it still has so much more story to tell and that's like the cool thing about star wars is that technically we have 19 years worth of gap of Darth Maul stories? Yeah, totally. Uh, I mean, you know, he should. I guess the same can be said for Snoke too. With the right, you know, it's it's, it's amazing. That's that's the cool part of it. But I still care about more like of what Snoke's story is because, yes. like, sorry, I'm just saying, like th that whole thing about like, and if if this is how you feel about things, that's fine. About like, you know, I know this person. We talked about this earlier. I know that person dies. So I'm yes. not interested. It's like, well, you, you know, you might've had like a great grandpa die or something, but you, aren't you still interested when you're like, you hear like your grandpa got like in a he bar a fight with Christopher Lee or something, you know, like, wouldn't you be interested to hear the stories still? Like, come on. You know, like, sure. nah, my grandpa's yeah. dead. I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to hear about it. Yeah. Or your great grandpa could have been a Nazi and that could have right. been, that yeah. Been yeah. It's like, whoa, plot extremes. twist, you know? <laughs> yeah exactly exactly um so sorry this is kind of funny like I, was, I, don't know, I don't know if this has any readings anymore but remember when rebels right after uh i guess it's i don't know if it was after jedi last jedi came out or what but when uh darth maul first did the mind thing in rebels mm, yeah i was like yo yeah, yeah. i was yeah. like what he started the knights of red like i remember like getting like so behind that 
Hey, oh, theory. dude. Uh, but like, they, you know, if you read the comics, you can, they kind yeah. of like, they Debunk. kind of yeah. poo pooed on that theory, yeah. which is fine. Yeah, um, that's the point. You know, but it, yeah, I think you guys are onto something. I think there is still some story left. Dave knows where Maul is in this time. Oh, totally. And Solo is what ten years before. Um, nine years before. I think nine years, right? So we have a little bit of gap. Um, so clearly something. Yeah, I'm trying to think. It's it's not, not about, it's not right. I think it's it's like ten or twelve years. It starts out okay. like a couple years before. Like yeah, it's right. like a yeah, big right, span right, of time. Right. There's a time jump. Yeah, yeah. Solo is one of the weirdest ones when it comes to time. It but, is. They um, really just didn't care with it, which is great. No. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, <laughs> like, we're that's just gonna tell thing. you a story. It's, Deal with it, nerds. Yeah. That's a chasm for you, though. You yeah, know? it's like you know how long was Luke on Dagobah? Yeah, blah, all blah, 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 all that stuff. Um, Time that doesn't matter. <laughs> to your point, Revenge of the Sith was one of those you watch. Like this has to take place over so many months because Padme's pregnant at the beginning. It's showing at the end of it she's really pregnant. And when you watch this, all like oh my god, maybe it did take place over like three days. You know, it's it's weird because did, the, didn't Filoni talk about it? Didn't didn't he say it's know. like essentially or like Matt? I feel like I've seen someone recently say like Revenge of the Sith basically takes place over like a week or something. Oh, okay. I sense. think that would make sense technically. You know, you know what Clone Wars did for me. Like, I just want to see like what ev- everything that happens like in the cutaways. Yes, I'm just like there's so much yes! material that you can tell. Mm. Uh, you know, I think that's the way that they could keep, you know, as in the prequel era. Of or, course. Or the, honestly, what I really want is the pre-prequel era. Like, yeah. give me Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. Yeah. And then give me the, like, the the, the lost years of Obi-Wan and Anakin. Those yeah. 10 years. Oh, I don't man. know. I, I hope. I hope one. Never know. Happen, but. um, There's more of a chance now, man. But Clone Wars, Clone Wars, you know, a lot of people are like, new, we want new, we want new. But Clone Wars proved that even, like, people who don't like the prequels can enjoy it oh like, yeah that's a thing that's what see and this kind of goes on in a different direction but when you watch if anyone hasn't seen it yet the second episode of the gallery and the mandalorian thing oh that man. second episode was nothing but prequel love and it's great john is even like i grew up with this originals and they got people that are now growing up with these movies and like People are noticing and talking about different things from these movies and it's so weird dave is the one and i've hate IGN put an article is like why Clone Wars makes the prequels watchable. And I'm like, it doesn't do that. <laughs> it expands on what George was trying to convey. Okay. And they got George their clicks, I guess. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they totally get their clicks. But like when you yeah. watch, you know, all of Clone Wars, there's a lot more satisfactory to the satisfaction really to what happens with Order 66, why it's important. I don't know. It, it's huge. Well, it's like, you know, there's been a lot of uh, Phantom Menace love recently, I think because of the Mandalorian uh, gallery uh, episode, right? Like, I don't, I've just seen a lot of like fandom or fan, not fandom menace. Uh, excuse me. I didn't mean to mention sure. them on this. Um, the, there's been a lot of Phantom Menace uh, love this last weekend. I feel like, like yeah. uh, our boy at chat, you know, uh, on YouTube. Uh, was talking about how he didn't know there were so many miniatures used and stuff, you know, like, oh, on, like insane. for some reason people are showing all the love, you know, and I'm like, yeah, like Phantom Menace, it, but all of these movies, mm-hmm. the prequels are no different than the sequels and the originals, yep. right? Yep. Like every Star Wars movie, even Solo and uh, Rogue One, every one of these films, if you are willing to dig in and look past the stuff that you might like, you go at there is so much to dissect in there there's so much to bring up and bring out and like that's just the beauty of what mm-hmm. george made it's not just a disney era thing it's like george this is what george started you know he started like look at all yeah. these things we can bring up and talk about like these are these are dense films you may not like them like they may not be your cup of tea you may not like the dialogue but i mean just i don't know get into them and and Look for the themes, man. You got to look for the themes over uh, all that other stuff. But that doesn't really matter if you if you know if you don't want to let Star Wars consume your soul. You know, if you just want to kind of watch a good movie, you know, then you should still watch these. But yeah, yeah anyway, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, no. Well, you brought up you brought up all the other movies just now because I, I kind of I guess the the root of this topic for for a minute was the 
the parallels between for one minute new film too for one second no um TLJ obviously it's super noticeable but Jerry did you notice anything from the Rise of Skywalker in particular because I I mean there's some things I thought was cool but but what about you because I think you have a particular thing you wanted to bring up right I, I had one thing but I also um oh gosh there was I feel like there was a couple things but the one that really sticks out in my head and probably everyone thinks this is the whole mall escaping in the final episode in victory and death in the shuttle and she's trying to hold it there you know oh, just like that yeah. whole like her holding oh, it i'm like we've seen that a couple of times like in mm-hmm. rebels like the second season the second sister and uh the fifth brother which the the two whenever whenever um yeah. sarah jessica parker and the other shark dude come in there and like they are both trying to hold uh yes. the shuttle from leaving the uh, the phantom from leaving and it takes both of them and the, the guy gets distracted. And so they are able to get away here. You've got a character like in, in rise of Skywalker, you've got like Ben and Ray, Kylo and Ray, like both fighting over that one thing. But Ray like starts out holding that thing there. Yeah. She don't need Kylo, you know? Yeah. And like Ahsoka is just like, I'm going to just like, just like, I'm going to no, you can't, you better not go nowhere. Maul. Don't you go nowhere. And uh, that's that whole, I don't know, that that really spoke to me with like, it really mirrored that Ray sequence with sure. like in the desert and stuff, which whatever you think of it, whatever. But uh, also remember, uh, there was a, a little bit of music, shout out to Kevin Kiner uh, at the, in, during the siege yeah, of Mandalore sure. where they're actually getting there. Where it was a Soka theme, theme, but then it did a little Super tiny bit subtle. of race theme. Oh, I didn't notice. It was that. like right when she lands on the platform in the very first episode. It was yeah. like they they did the. the it's a little bit. Um, it's like ba na 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 na, but it, yeah. it goes. Then it goes. They did like the last two Like goes back yeah, into it's, whatever. It's good. Sweet. It, yeah, it's, it's killer. Yeah, he killed. It definitely has the ba na 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 na. Yeah. It was there. It was there. It was there. You know, while you were going on on your uh, comparisons, I, like something just hit me, and I like looked. At I Scott saw. I smile. saw that. I saw that. What's that? Uh, isn't it really funny in Star Wars? Like, there's certain characters that like change like immensely, and then so do their names. Mm-hmm. Obi Wan. Yeah. Darth Maul. Yeah. Ray. Yeah. Mm. Uh, who was the other one that I just thought of? Oh, good grief. Ben is a good one. Ben. Ben's yeah. A, yeah. Yeah. Ben's a good like, one. I was, I was like, isn't it funny how we like are now saying Ben instead of Kylo? Yeah. Like, completely changed. Like, no more Darth Maul. I never, I haven't yeah, said Darth people, Maul. People don't, so say, long. people don't say Darth Maul, Maul. especially if Maul. they don't, if they watch Clone Wars, you don't say Darth Maul. You, you say know? Maul. Right. And, uh, you know, the, that, that the, red horned guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's how my uh, mom would say it. It's, uh, it's really cool because, um, I don't know. I'm like, this might be a stretch, but probably not. But like, it's the whole, we were talking about it off camera earlier. It was Saul to Paul. Yeah. And yeah. Biblical. Like a biblical reference. Like these Ooh. characters are changed. And what are you dropping the biblical? Oh, man, nice. Well, Anakin that's Invader. That, the, yeah, every, Anakin, every Anakin whole... Invader. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's dumb. Yeah. It's like the biggest one. I'm just yeah. like, I don't know. Yeah. But with them, it's almost, Anakin Invader, I think, has been the best, uh, the most obtainable, the, obviously. The, the best interpretation of two separate entities. Yes. In, yes. In this one thing, like, I tend not to call Obi Wan Ben. Like, Never. by the time I get to, nah. to you know, the yeah, trilogy, I don't call like, Ben. Ken- yeah, Ben Kenobi. Even yeah. everyone says Ben Kenobi. Yeah, but it's you know, it's cool. Yeah. There's, again, uh, Jerry, you could probably say it better than me in the voice, but it rhymes. <laughs> yeah, it does. So <laughs> uh, it's uh, poetry. It, uh, it rhymes. Um, yeah. Real. Real, real, fake, 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 paper mache. Um, I Wait, think I can make this out of pops. I don't know. What are you highlighting, Jerry? Real, real, fake, fake. Real, real, <laughs> fake. He's got the header and he's like, he's coloring everything. It's going to be real, CG. Real, and you're fake. just like, <laughs> and the camera uh, turns. Let's just, the use, just like, let's just use Q-tips for this one. Yeah. Maybe those really big ones they use to test for COVID nineteen. 
Yeah, stay bomb bad. <laughs> this, yeah, is bomb bad uh, this is bomb bad, man. This is But yeah, no, it's just it's it's really cool to see that kind of stuff, and especially when it just hits you. I'm sitting here listening to you oh, talk about yeah. that. Yeah, that's the best part. Yeah, uh, this realizations are gonna happen for a long time. That was the cool thing about this 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 arc. Like there was a bunch of things that are gonna be like, oh damn, I didn't think of that until yeah. way later, you know. And that's what Star Wars really is to its core. It's one of those things where you can. Sit there and think about it almost biblically and be like, <laughs> Another one just hit me. What, 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 what? You just watch this and Maul's like, Let me die. Like, he's already fallen down before. Like, he's used to this. Like, yes. <laughs> yeah. He's just like, Let me he's die. Like, <laughs> the, dude, the dude survived on his hate alone, right? Like, yes. without, like, yes. you got to imagine, like, he didn't have to no dying. back to band aid. He, like, yeah. was cut in half and lived on a trash planet. Can you imagine the dysentery that dude has? I mean, like, <laughs> stupid, Did like it, it, ridiculous, it, it, right? How does he yeah. poop? Like, does it just fall out of his lower intestine or whatever? You know, like, anyway, back. Yeah, so he's just like, don't make that happen to me again. Just kill me. <laughs> just kill me. Like, that was weird though. You, you, it's, uh, it's like his fate, his inevitable fate, the fate that we thought he originally died. This fate now is worse than dying. Like he would rather be dead than see this change happen because yeah, he yeah. knows how much it'll change everything. You have no idea what you're doing. That's the best line. Mm. Yeah, you have no idea what you're doing. And when she, we're all gonna burn. We're all gonna burn. <laughs> you have no idea. Which what Anakin doing. does inevitably end up burning, yeah. which is oh, pretty cool. Snap, man. <laughs> twice, huh? Yeah, <laughs> twice. You're right. Oh, yeah, was, uh, uh, <laughs> dude. Oh, wait. Uh, you bring up a good point um, it, it, because there's there's so many things you can keep paralleling, and I wanted to bring up one thing. Rogue One had a ton of tributes to it. I'm on with the Force of Forces with me. How wild is that? Because it's it's Ahsoka saying it to Rex. Like, yeah, Rex that. Oh, yeah. oh, I was because that was that was all in the uh, uh, shattered episode, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 That episode absolutely wrecked me absolutely okay can we yeah. talk about the the parts that like well there's one more thing i want to bring up to to therapy wise. for now no no, no. One, one more because that'll that'll definitely get brought up but but there's like, one no dude part of parallel that i that no one's mentioned yet and you brought it up earlier um before we talked i think right how sam Witwer or maul has his own forced unleash moment where yeah he pulls everything on a hyper drive i don't, I don't or, know how no one has made that like and I no think I put it up. in like our, our network like chat before. Yeah, like, yeah. He went full Star Killer, and like no one's like, did. like, how did you guys not notice that? Like that is, it, it's Sam Witwer doing the voice. Yeah, it's obvious uh, to me. It was just like here's kind of like an homage to that big bombastic. We're gonna use the force in big crazy ways, you know. That was it because it can still happen and still work. Yeah. Um, it's just you don't want it to be a video game where it's like, oh, I'm out of force juice. Um, gotta wait until it <laughs> my bar levels back up. You know, Dude, he also he, he also gets his Vader moment in the hall when he's wrecking shot oh. and oh. he doesn't even have his saber. No. So me and my friends have been uh debating on who's more brutal. And I think there's a really good argument to be made that Maul is like Ripping people to shreds with just the force. Off. Yes, with just the force, not with the lightsaber. Dude, he he is a hundred percent more brutal. Like he's what? What is he? He, he they call him a, a a blunt tool or something. He's like a, an in, he's like an instrument of death or something. Yeah. right? Yeah. Like that's the way Maul Maul is a blunt instrument. He's he's made to be a weapon. And so, yeah. well, dang, did point. he prove it, man? Well, Shot the dude in half, like impaled the guy in the wall yep. with the wall. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, there's that and one then, part where he walks in and he throws one dude off the edge, uses someone else's blaster to kill the other guy across yeah. from him. I was like, Oh, Whoa. yeah, like he throws it, like shoots two guys. Yes, that yes. is epic. I was, I was like, What has happened, dude? And he had a oh. Snoke moment too when he's on the thing we just watched. What do you mean? He got to be Snoke too. Oh, the when he's, when he's sitting on the throne, he's like, Just like. With the, the bullets. Oh, oh that was so cool. Like, yeah, just like whatever. I don't want these. <laughs> I, think, I think the pieces of what we're saying is Darth Maul is one of the coolest villains in Star Wars. Ah, like, totally. And they, awesome. they did it. They did it. They actually gave him way more credence in these four episodes alone. They did it uh 21 years after his original death. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Like, 
so I don't know. It's just it's so cool. And then, you know, we get to the point where he dies and you're like, wow, I feel bad. Yeah. But he, get, he gets his re redemption. Whatever. Yeah. He gets another Vader moment or Anakin moment at the end. It's if you're talking about his death, like his actual yeah. death, Rebel's death. It's almost like he finally gets the piece. Someone finally, like Obi Wan's finally, like this isn't me getting revenge on you. This is me having mercy on you because you have you, you suffered. You, it's like you are suffering. I'm gonna put you out yeah. of your misery, you poor yeah. creature. I'm like getting yeah. like teary eyed, almost thinking about it because it is it is crazy. Is it crazy they made us like? feel things for the the cool i mean we're all like the devil we've always man. felt like ooh, he's got cool tattoos and horns and a, and a double blade sure. lightsaber but like we're feeling things for maul where he's like that part where he's saying let me die we're all going to burn and stuff and then finally <laughs> obi-wan in the desert he's trying to get at him he's like i want this is what will fulfill me what will make yeah. me happy and obi-wan's just like i'm I'm beyond it, man. Like I'm beyond mm -hmm. it, but I'll, I, I'm going to, I'm going to do this for you because sure. I think it's what you want. That's what he wanted was just to die. Mm -hmm. So sad. Well, there's, <laughs> so there's sad. one thing. Troy, had I no choice. About, well, this is, this is one thing I want to bring up about Maul because it dawned on me after Troy said it out loud and it, it never hit me. This is going to hit you a little bit different too. When Ezra and Maul are trying to get in contact with the Holocron, you know, they're trying to talk about it, that what they're both seeking, okay, is on the planet with two suns. Remember, that was the line. It was like on the two on the two sun planet, what you were seeking is there. And the fact that what what was different, what Maul was seeking was obviously Obi-Wan, okay? But what was really the end goal was Luke. Luke was the 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 way that they would end all the Sith. The one that wow. everyone was seeking was Luke, and it never hit me till then. It was like the planet of the twin suns is, does not only hold Obi Wan, but it also holds the importance of Luke and what Luke means to end the the Sith Order and how he will kind of end it all, essentially, you know, from what we know. And yeah, God, oh, you just got me going with the whole Maul thing. I never thought I would love Maul, and Sam Witwer, as much stuff as he's getting right now, which he doesn't deserve, by the way, it's his opinion. He can have it. Um, we yeah. we get this amazing, amazing character out of this. Like Dave did it, and that was one thing. Talking Bay did an episode with Sam Whitworth, and it was like, "How are we gonna bring Maul back?" It's pretty much the big mantra of it. And how is Dave was like, "It's gonna ruin my career if I don't do it successfully," <laughs> right. you know? <laughs> and he does it, and now we're like, I mean, "This has become more of an episode of Maul than anything," just because of the. I have you ever known anyone? I've known several people over my life who don't like that Maul is back, that they brought Maul back. They're like, ah, oh, sure. it seems cheap or whatever, you know, like now no one can die and stuff. And it's like, but I mean, that's kind of what, that, that's just kind of a trope in Star Wars now, but it's, the execution is everything. Mm -hmm. But I would love to talk to some of those people now, like to talk to someone who had the idea. If you, if if you're out there listening right now, watching whatever, um, and you have never really been a fan of them bringing them all back, what do you think of him now? Like him, yeah. th this arc, we it isn't even complete yet, but we have these big pieces of this dude's life that he was there during Revenge of the Sith and knew what was going on. I just, it adds a cool wrinkle to this. And the more cool wrinkles, the more details that they add to the story that's what's going on in the background. It, it it's just more richness, man. It, it's it's a it lot is. more uh, richness to the story. It's just flavor. It's just flavor. It's great flavor. Actually, it's, it's more than flavor. It's really deep. It's awesome. It, it's so. I it's mean, great. I almost just cried for this man in red and black makeup. So <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing, you know. I I've I feel that each episode has had its individual moments, but the third arc, the third episode, what was what was it called, Jerry? The third uh, one in the arc. Um, shattered which is what i was and still am about it because that order 66 okay. mode was just dandy everything about it was just like i mean the music before felt a lot like uh padme's ruminations at the name of the song whatever it felt a lot like that where they got maul inside that capsule and they're bringing it in. felt very oh, blade runner to me oh, also yeah. like it felt very like philip k dick 
was came back from the grave was like, I know I didn't write the music for Blade Runner, but uh, let's. <laughs> this is what the aliens told me that you should write for this. Um, <laughs> sorry, but no. <laughs> To your point, the music oh. was extremely ominous. It was almost like the scenes and it, it builds the tension, stuff. man. Yeah. It builds so but much because yeah. I'm like, this is dark. It's yes. so it doesn't feel good, even though I'm like, oh, there's Ooh. Ursa Rin with her helmet off. She looks like young Sabine. She looks like Sabine. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, it's like I, ugh. well, when yeah, when I'm Maul sorry. the whole thing is great because you know, Rex and, and Ahsoka have that moment where they're like, you know, I'm so glad we're doing this, that kind of thing. And then it gets to the point where like, I love it. They've, they've shown Maul, people guarding Maul's door. And all of a sudden you get this moment where Maul literally goes and opens his eyes yeah. and it all gets triggered. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I noticed that he was like actually just like calm and meditating. Yeah. Like during that bit. Kind of like Qui-Gon does before. Oh, what? I take. Dude. <laughs> and he's just sitting there. Anakin's waiting. true dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, by the way. Well, like some deep stuff there. <laughs> this, this this is why I would say that you having watched through the Clone Wars and getting uh, Ahsoka and Rex's relationship would really benefit you in this oh, yeah. episode, right? One hundred percent. Like you can still come in and watch it and get the get like okay, I get what's going on here. Oh, that's oh, but it the gravity of it, like was a ton of bricks in my like in my lap man whenever like just talking about all the crazy stuff uh like rex well they're talking about man it's the end of the war yeah. this could be over and rex has yeah. that line uh that that back with ahsoka like that kind of speech of you know the clones are i think it was in the trailer too a little bit right like yeah. we're kind of yeah. We have mixed feelings about the war because, you know, without we it, bread, we never would have existed. <laughs> and Bless. is it like seriously? Like that was like, yeah. dude, this brings up so much, uh, like about the sanctity of life and yeah. the gravity of you created life. It's here. Mm -hmm. You created it for this conflict, and now it's yep. like these these are living, breathing, breathing people. So I think it's Star Wars has done clones the best that anyone ever has. Usually, oh, yeah. people are like, "Oh, I think I'm the real person, but I'm actually the clone," or yeah. like it's an exact copy. Where these are like, no, it's the DNA, but these are like their own people. And yeah, well, that's the point of Clone Wars. And like Dave, literally, just like completely like you know, wrote his last name at the end of the last page and was done with it because he, that was the point, right? It was to make sure the clones had their own identity and he yeah. gave it to them. And then the, of course we, we have the moment where, where the, of course order 66 happens and you hear Ahsoka having that moment where she knows what's mm. going on. Like, what is how I feel something feels so bad. And, and Yoda remember Yoda holds against the wall and has that same exact moment too. Mm -hmm. He feels Anakin's turn. Ahsoka feels Anakin's turn because they were the closest how, to him. Well, as I was going to say, like how I was realizing that as I was watching that, that super cut. Yeah. The super cuts would have been really that too. Ahsoka and Yoda are the only oh, two that, that have that. Yep. What's going on with Anakin, even Obi-Wan. I, it hit me this time how much I'm like, that's like Anakin's best friend, kind of father, kind of big brother, weird relationship. Doesn't have like a something's wrong with Anakin moment. You know, it's yeah. like that's I think it speaks to I don't what do you what, what do you get from that? Because to me, I kind of see. I think I see to me it adds in a new hope, an Obi-Wan who is regretting that he wasn't closer. I think that's why he talks about it the way he does. He's like, I that's if I heavy, if Jerry. I'd actually been what he needed me to be, he wouldn't have turned. I'm just yeah. coming to this now. Yeah. Like Yeah. Well, dude, you brought this up earlier when we're watching it. This is such a good episode. No, you brought this up earlier. The fact that Obi Wan straight up actually you can say it because you made that point earlier. <laughs> yeah, this just it's it's so good. This uh, Obi Wan's one of my favorite characters. So I, I tend to like listen oh, to Obi's the best. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this episode that we watched, uh, the the which one was it? The Phantom Phantom Prince. Yeah, 
when he's on the hologram and he's talking to uh, Bo-Katan, Rex, and Ahsoka, and he asks to speak to her alone, and he's telling her about what's going on with Anakin, mm. she's, you know, I don't know what the lineup is, but he says the council isn't always right. Cool. <laughs> and this is the first yes. time that he, like, blank says it. Yeah. In Revenge of the Sith, they kind of, like, hint at oh, it. Oh, it's alluded. When Anakin says, why are you asking me of this? Mm-hmm. And then Obi-Wan so says, not. the council, the council. Is asking <laughs> Yeah, the council is asking you. I love because so, if he was trying to get to him, he yep. was. He I don't think he knew how to do it. Nope. So that was that was <sighs> Obi Wan in Clone Wars. That was Obi Wan like becoming Qui Gon. Like in that one right. sentence. Oh, 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 you're right. In that one sentence, he like straight up is just like, yeah, oh. the always right. <laughs> and so, oh, Eric, that's awesome. Yeah. So at that point, they have already done like the goodbye friend thing. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think Obi Wan is like on a path to go, I think I know how to get to this guy. Yep. Yeah. I think I know how this is going to happen. Well, then so much happens later. You got to think Obi Wan probably after Grievous's death would have made that the point. Order 66 cuts that apart. Then him seeing that Anakin was killing, you know, Jedi cut that apart. The fact that Anakin is then Padme's, the father of Padme's kids cut, like, by the time Anakin gets to Moose, I mean, by the time Obi Wan gets to Mustafar, he's like, "This is not the same dude that I." I mean, he's shocked. I mean, he's like completely shocked. So yeah, he wasn't yeah. expecting yeah. it at all. Oh so. no, nah. totally side side. But slide. I think what what you're saying, which originated this whole shindig, is uh, <laughs> I think he's like in general mode. So yeah. like, and maybe yeah. you know, maybe there's an argument to be made that like his mind is clouded straight up by Palpatine. He's like, "This is the guy who's gonna like mess my, my plan up." Yep. So they've never said it. Nah. But who, why wouldn't he have the power to block Obi Wan's mind? Um, mm. Obi Wan is a master. All of them, man. Obi Wan's a master, but you know he's also a general. Yep. Um, I mean, they I, were blocking all the the masters, man. Yeah. All the masters. Yeah. None of them knew what was like. Like Mace kind of thought of it, but. It's the same thing. It's like, why don't you? What, what was it like last week? A couple weeks ago, Scotty, we were like, walk out the, walk out the Jedi Temple front door, go like yeah. five blocks that way, and and <laughs> talk to him, just confront yeah. him. Yeah. But, dude, um, Obi Wan, to me, this, I, I never. Obi Wan is human. That's what I've always thought. I've always thought Obi Wan is human. Everyone's like, "Why did Obi Wan like leave him there to die?" Like, there's Obi Wan is is so he's such a great Jedi, right? But yet he is still so like mired in like he's so I- imperfect, and he yeah. he like he has so much guilt. I think I think he has so much guilt that it it keeps so him for better. like. He leaves Anakin to burn because I think he's just I think he's scared. I think he's like, I I can't do it. Mm-hmm. I can't do it. I have yeah. to go. I think he regrets that, you know, like every day. I think that's yeah. something that he thinks about. Like, I can't believe I just let him le- left him there, you know? And but just that whole the whole scene that you're talking about with Obi-Wan telling mm-hmm. Ahsoka, like, c- could you could you say something to him? Just say something to him. Well, then Yoda does the same thing later. Yoda's like, it was like, have something to say to Master Skywalker you want? Or whatever, whatever the exact they line is. looks so cute, too. Dude, so, that, that hurt. hurt. That hurt. That hurt. But he's just standing there, he's like, something you're saying to Skywalker? You have? Yeah. Uh, like, I love like, that, because okay, that, was, that was right after, like, Mace had been like, uh, this is for yeah. Jedi only, yeah. citizen yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I was like, yeah. So that's Dave dropping a little bit of like dust on like these are the two Jedi that like are actually figuring it out. Yeah, let yeah. me tear up for real because because yeah. of the moment like you see the logging in Yoda's eyes, knowing that he damn well did not want Ahsoka to leave the Order because that's what it would have made him Anakin stay. Obviously, I mean it's hundred percent true. Mm-hmm. Talk you about know, Jedi with regret, man. Oh, you know? total regret. And like, like I don't know. Go, go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. What were you saying, man? Well, I was gonna say, just you're watching that moment with Yoda and Ahsoka, and you can't help but to realize, like, yeah, they're on to it. But they're also, you're also thinking, like, that that dude has seen so much history. You know, he knows what's about to happen. He can yeah. probably feel, I mean, find out too with the High Republic how much he is aware of things happening around him. You know, like yeah. it's brutal. It's so hard to watch. But if I'm not mistaken, I'm sure right after it's whenever 
um, or soon to be after it's whenever Yoda, Yoda has to cut off the head of the clones, which I want to get into as well with Order 66. So that's super interesting with uh, you know, how, how differently each Jedi treats the clones after Order 66. It's a, oh, yeah. Especially, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. That'd be you remember like a couple years ago, there was like all that, like, or no, this wasn't a couple years ago. Sorry, this was like last year where like everyone was kind of, man, Yoda's kind of a, a dick or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You remember all yeah, that? Yeah. They're like, yeah. ugh, Yoda isn't that great. This, they gave Yoda a moment in the, it's that moment. It's where he says something else you have to say, you know? He's like, yeah. I'm not gonna give up. I'm not giving up on you. I'm not no, mad. No. We messed up. We mm-hmm. messed up and I'm here for you. And they gave him the yeah. moment and down to the, can we talk about how special and sweet and like tear inducing it was that he was like, uh, may the force be with you, Padawan, to her. Yeah, uh, that was amazing. Yeah, I was really. like, it's, it's so still, funny. it just means like you're still a part of it. You don't know it, but you're still a. Uh, he's like, I still consider you. He's like, I. He's like, we messed up. It was us. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was almost like a. I'm still here. I still believe in you, and that I'm. Man, I'm getting emotional thinking about it. That was great. It was great. <laughs> That's the thing. Not as emotional like, as. Rex, I don't know what you want to get into, Scotty, but no, no, we, we talking about Rex. Part. No, that's the next part because Rex you, fighting his programming. Oh, that was good. And like you, oh. you hear, you hear Anakin's turn, and of course, in the siege of the Sith, that that moment which we've talked about was so well done. And mm. Ahsoka said, looking off the bow, and she feels it. And then right after, something's wrong, Rex. Something's wrong. And then Rex turns around. You know, just getting the and I love they use the original audio clip execute oh, yeah. 66. And then ooh, Rex turns around and uh Jerry, you were you I think you were the most emotionally impacted by that. I cried, but really it seems like you were like really moved. Why is that? It, Why was that moment big well, for you? First of all, the, the clones around like point their blasters at her first, first. and he goes, No, like he's he's still facing the hollow table, right? Yep. Yep. And he goes, no, I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it. It's uh-huh. almost like, it's almost like old yeller. Or something like I'll take the dog out back. And she, it's my dog. I'll do it. You know, that, but not, I mean, to a greater degree, it's just like this whole, is it, I don't know if it's like a father daughter dynamic between him and Ahsoka. Yeah. Do you think it's more paternal or do you think it's more fr- I, I mean, it's, it's a best friend. It's a best yeah, friend thing. It's, a best, it's definitely a best friend thing. But it, it just just that he's like, I'll I'll do it. And that he's Especially in after tears. He becomes best friend. He's in like tears the from the moment he turns around and his yeah. guns are shaking. He is oh, fighting it's... a chip created by the Lord of the Sith, Darth mm-hmm. Sidious, Palpatine, Master Manipulator, cannot fight. The power of friendship and love. It's cheesy, but it is a hundred percent as powerful, and he does not understand a lick of it. Nope. And don't tell me you didn't lose it when he starts going. He's his brain is trying his subconscious is trying to warn her and give yeah. her a clue. Like, find, find him. Fives, find him, find, find him, five. find fives, find five. fives. And then and boom. He can't, and he can't do it. Mm. Nah. It's good. I seriously was like ugly crying in my like I you guys have heard me on your talk about when uh Han Solo died and I was like uh getting a cold and delirious in the middle of my first the viewing of Force is, Awakens. How I, I ugly cried and like my wife really questioned why she was with me um in that moment. But like I I almost do it was like five, like five in the morning or something. <laughs> And I was like, oh, he's fighting it. Oh. <laughs> Not quite like that, but you know what I mean. Like the music, was, though. I was the oh, music was like, got me there, Jerry. It was the. That's why I'm. Oh, I'm so glad <laughs> that they kept like the the Blade Runner score up until that point. Yeah, yeah. It's such an emotional punch. As yep. soon as you hear, ba, 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 I mean, it's like. It. Who it's knew? So sick. That is like, that's not even like I think a whole. Tra- that's just like background music of Revenge of the Sith, right? That's just like the, mm-hmm. the score. That's just like the the soundtrack of Anakin's fall, right? It's like 
here's the fall of yeah. the Jedi. Ba, 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 ba. And it always accompanies like when Anakin's looking off of the the deck yeah. on Mustafar, like yeah. crying Sun. because of all the horrible stuff that he's done, the horrifying yep. stuff he's committed. He knows it's bad. He knows. He thinks that he's going to be able to save Padme because he did it. And he's sitting there like, I, I, I hate myself. And he basically, <laughs> yeah, that's the music. That is the music. Yeah. I hope you're all crying right now. Well, the thing is, you watch that moment, music's playing, and she just knocks. <sighs> she's even the best part, I think, like about Ahsoka in this moment is these clones turn to droids. Okay, obviously. Instantaneously turn into droids. That's all they're programmed to do. And Rex even like go find her and go kill her. You know, that's the order. Like you can't, you have to go do that. Yeah. And um, when Rex hits his head too is an awesome moment because at the no point. She's just deflecting the, the shots. She's not hurting a single one of them. And she yeah. shows up into the pit. And then I believe she uh, sneaks around and finds those droids. And how cool, how Dave Filoni, George Lucas is this. The the clones have now become droids. But the droids are now going to become companions. They're even mm-hmm. like, what is going on? That's the best part. They're even like, yeah. we don't know. And Lucas like, I don't know. Like, we have no <sighs> idea what's going on. Oh, I'm getting chills talking about that moment. Shout out to the droid who is very chopper esque too, cheap or oh, whatever. Cheap. Cheap. I was, I was convinced that was yeah. not boy. I was, I was freaking out. I God. was like, I was like, cheap. I was like, it's kind of like uh, chopper. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if Dave's got like a ch thing. You know, how like yeah. uh, Warwick has like the W's. Yeah, yeah. Right. I don't know why. Oh, good point. Yeah, it's it's the C one chin P. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. He must. Yeah, but I like, guess he. You know, I guess since he. He played Chopper. He's yeah. Like, well, let's do one that's got a CH. Yeah. Whatever. Well, so good. But that's was, the thing. I, just, I love them adding more droids like Chopper, though. You know, yeah. like because, yeah. it, and I mean, uh, not okay. Canon actually, Chopper was in a, a Y wing that crashed on. Uh, 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 I can't think of the name of the planet now. Uh, crashed in Chamsundula's front yard. Essentially. Okay. Yeah. You remember yeah. that? Couples? I don't, to be honest with you. It's when they went to like, it's when they went to uh, uh, Harris house where Thrawn was based, you know? Oh, and they okay. I do remember that. Actually. I-wing and choppers yes. like out there, like staring at it, like a Vietnam vet. <laughs> I remember that now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. he came it. from that thing, and like she took him and repaired yeah. him, and so that was her droid companion from there. But oh, that makes sense, dude. I want more. I want more of those kind of droids. Which one of the new ones died in the three? Like cheap and the other two. One of them died, right? Or they all got killed. They all got killed. They all, Rex, like, Rex had one of them near the the Y wing at the very end, which I thought was, it was interesting. It was Ahsoka's like Ahsoka's R two, oh, like, whatever okay. Ahsoka's R R two unit droid yeah, was. The, the, the gets, Rex had an R two unit at the very end. If y'all noticed that next to it, the Y wing, it's pretty yeah. cool. I don't know the significance oh, in of that. in the Y wing. No, literally next to the Y wing at the very oh, end. Right, if you right. watch it, Rex had like just put uh the shovel back in the thing, and you see an R two unit right there. I don't know. That is oh, symbolic of anything okay. like a cool or a comic or a book. But but one thing I wanted to say is that you have this moment where everything turns. You know, you have the moment where you have uh Ahsoka having to deal with this and like she has to how does she get Rex again? How did they, how did they get Rex back in that room? I don't remember now. Didn't they, they zap Rex? They basically they zap Rex. like the droids they, trapped him in the blast door yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yes, and then they zap. Shout him. out to the Beyond yeah. the Black Doors network. And he was, he was he was beyond the blast door. There we go. Hey. Uh, no, no, we're, but the fact that Maul is, is wrecking house still during all of that. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Amazing. And then, of course, you get the part where she figures out the whole moment in Anakin's code. Uh, what was it? The first? Oh, it's, the, it's the release date of the movie. Of the movie, yeah. Eight one eight or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I was like, when I was watching that, like, that means something. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I, has, I oh, hadn't, yeah. I hadn't noticed that yet. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. The, it's oh, the release movie? date. Of the movie. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh. Eight one oh eight, I think something like that. Yeah, it's it's great. But now um, everyone's like, oh, that's an important date now. Was like <laughs> all you posers. <laughs> You, I, I was, yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. 
well, like, I don't know. Then, then of course, I love the dude. It, it gives so much credence to the fives arc now, you know, that it really does. Like, you see the old ship, and then it kind of has a mystery moment, has a mystery yeah. box for a second for anyone that hasn't seen it. You know, Ahsoka's like, what is going What is happening? Yeah. And then she learns, and then we have the moment. The, the probably one of the best moments is they're right when the episode ends, essentially, when they got Rex on the table and the droids working on them, and then. The other droid's trying to hold it back, and then it ends. Then we start that next final episode up right where it leaves off. And that, you know what's funny? This is not weird. That last episode was amazing. Don't get me wrong. But it was almost the one that I was like, you know, they have to get out of it somehow. You know, yeah. I was looking forward to it. I knew they had to get out of it. But it was the one that I wasn't like hanging on the edge of my seat until the the epilogue to the epilogue, the Ooh, epilogue. I mean, that was just like worth it. Oh yeah. my god. But um, that was almost like a horror movie, too, because they're opening the door and yeah. like they're she's trying to push them out and deflect the blast and it yeah. doesn't close until rex you just see his blasters come up right yep and yeah. then just right. like it's so quick like you see the blasters come up and they get blasted the guy's yeah. out of the door the door closes she turns around and he's like sitting up you don't even really see him do it no. and there are so many moments in the this arc where they it's <laughs> You don't see the action happen, happen, but you see, mm -hmm. you see it, you see like the consequences of it, and then like you see like the character, like the whole smoking gun thing or whatever, mm -hmm. like they used to do back in the, I don't know, like noir movies or whatever, or something yeah. you know, like yeah. Yeah. you hear the gunshots and then it turns around, and, like someone else has a gun, so, like I don't know. that happened in Mando whenever Mando shoots IG uh, eleven, yeah. you know, yeah. But, um, you just, you, you just all you see is the blast and you see the smoke from, from the IG helmet, you know. I, I think it's so great that Rex had to kill clones. Like I that is something it's brutal. That's something I wanted to see in the show. Yeah. I was like, this has to happen. Yeah. It because does. Yeah. I don't remember exactly how his attitude is towards the whole thing in Rebels. Is he a little jaded when they first meet him in Rebels? Yeah, they do. He's like, he's like, it's a Jedi, you know, and 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 uh I think Wolf, whoever it was with him, Wolf was, was the right. it's a Jedi where he's the like yeah. the calm, calm down, calm down, dude. Calm yeah, down. yeah. Rex is the one that's calmed down, so he's not really jaded. Mm -hmm. But but it's funny, Kane is is mad at them for being close. It was great. That was mm -hmm. that was like I watched that moment recently, actually. But um, no, to your like point, Kane though, watch through coming on, man. Oh, oh totally. Kane watch through. It, it's great because you have you do have to see Rex have that moment and one thing that hit me heavy I mean, hit me so hard when watching it was the fact that ahsoka had to shoot someone or attack someone with her own face painted on it you know right. this whole show has been about how ahsoka is like so camaraderie with these people and the fact that yeah. she's gonna have to accept it and have to stop you know, i mean she's cutting you know blasters in half and stuff trying not to make this happen you know and you got Maul over here just killing each one of them because Maul is all about the end game. Maul does not care mm -hmm. about the process. Yeah. And you have those moments where Ahsoka's trying her best not to hurt them. And she has to. She has to deflect blasters at one point and she hits them. And you're like, dang, you know? And of course, the ending is where it's like, yeah. yeah. Oh my God. But Jerry, say the big line that Ahsoka says. You know well, what I'm talking about? Oh, Which I know, I know these, these uh, soldiers are ready to die. Oh man, you've caught me. Um, <laughs> well, you know now I don't know it because I thought Jerry would. Okay, I'll finish it. Finish it. You finish it. It's finish like, it. Finish it. These soldiers are ready to die, but I'm not going to be the one to kill them. Oh, oh yes, right. <sighs> Ooh, yeah, that's brutal. God, that's it's good. You're right. That's like that was the moment in which all of us were like holy crap is ahsoka tano the most jedi jedi to ever jedi you know <laughs> like seriously yeah, though, it's like i'm i'm not going that that is so jedi even though she left the order it is. like this is a person who mm -hmm. doesn't agree fundamentally with the order that she used to be in but she still stands for everything that they should be, right? Yeah. Totally, totally. So, oh, knowledge and defense never attack. Mm -hmm. And these people are – these are my people. They're not themselves. Um, I got to do everything I can to not yeah. hurt any of them. Well, shout out to Sam Whitwer on his Twitch stream. Maybe y'all can get him on the show one day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was watching that. 
I was watching after his name was coming up in titles and headlines. Um, and he said perfectly, he said the thesis of, of this show and, and Ahsoka is that line. Yeah. Like, and that's why it's such a great finale. Um, her character doesn't change. No, not um, at all. Or, you know, like where she is to the point where we meet her. Yeah. At this right. point, um, she doesn't just like change in the middle of the, the mm. very last story. No. Um, and a lot of people are upset that she survived Order 66. But I think the show does a really good job of adding to the believability because she knows she knows these pe- like the, the troops and oh, their totally. tactics. Oh, totally, yes. And I think part of the failure of the Jedi in this instance, and I think it was orchestrated by Palpatine, was that they were just going to treat them as clone expendable, uh, uh, expendable yeah. soldiers. And like it's yeah. from the beginning of Revenge of the Sith where – and it's like, I'm going to go help him. Like, I yeah. don't know. It's just like a random clone. We know yeah. nothing about his name. Nope. And he's like, no, he's doing his job. You do yours. Yeah. And like all this Very stuff. Very beginning of Revenge of the Sith. And like, you, I mean, that line alone, you can't just be like, well, George wanted to like make the clones like likable. I'm like, well, yeah. no, like that was always part of his plan. Yeah. Like that line alone. I mean, you can't, you only have so much time in like a two hour movie. George is a genius for realizing that this needed to be a TV show. Oh, totally. Right. The fact that you got two years worth of like war mm-hmm. and that's the same thing with, uh, with uh, Phantom Menace and Darth Maul. Mm-hmm. People might be upset to hear this, but Darth Maul doesn't make sense in the story going forth with episodes two and three. Yes. Because you got to tell Anakin Skywalker's story in the movies. And that's the, the great thing about Clone Wars. You get to tell the clone story, Maul story. And this new uh, character that we didn't know at the time, Ahsoka. Oh, of course, and that's that's the crazy part. So that's um, so that's you know like a great essay. You just finish uh, finish strong. And yes, that's, that's that's you know that was their thesis statement with Ahsoka. No, it is. It and is. This was going to be like a pure Jedi who got to learn under Obi Wan, Anakin, Plo Koon, Yoda. Like you know what I mean? Everyone. So, yeah. Everyone, even her enemies, besides right. Ventress. You've got a bunch and of and mall. Mm-hmm. It's that's the, that's amazing. Yeah, because she really is. I mean, wow, the most Jedi. Jedi. I was always a Qui Gon, and then it was Ray for a little while. I really do think it's Ahsoka now. But yeah, she takes in everyone's advice, even Anakin. I think, man, I don't know. <sighs> that's a heavy one. I like. I, never thought of I still really like Ray. Like it's like almost a Luke Skywalker type of character, yeah. you know. Uh, but totally. <laughs> is Paul there? Sorry. Is Paul? No, there? no, we the door, the door magically opened. And I had to go. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Man, hate those <laughs> those malfunctioning doors. Um, yeah, it's all like the blast doors. Are, sometimes they don't um, work. Still right. get your arm <laughs> stuck in it. Am I right? Ooh. Yeah, totally. Um, um, but yeah, I think I. <sighs> Man, I haven't really thought about it. I think I would give it to Ahsoka almost right now, tonight, where I'm at. Man, I'm – Ahsoka is – I've been identifying with her so much through these last few, like, episodes, right? It's 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 really been – gosh, it's been over the top. It's been so insane. She is – she is the embodiment of what a Jedi should be. Like, I, I mean, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but, but like, right. I don't know. Well, no, don't tell me if I'm wrong because it'll hurt my feelings. So. <laughs> Dude, I think they're going to do big things with Ahsoka. I think they're, Dave's kind of been like shaping her up to be the Gandalf of the whole thing. You know, we've seen time and time again. Yeah. The imagery with her and Gandalf, even like at the, into this mm, show into she's got amazing. she's got the hood oh. up again i remember just being like whoa I, I was like whoa are we in rebels timeline here but then i was like she no, looked, there's no way yeah yeah exactly like that yeah yeah well Game obviously the by this, like you know and maybe it's weird because <laughs> oh scotty vader in the uh, clone wars animation but i'm like everything looks very rebelsy here mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but you know like that's because we're in the timeline mm-hmm. um everything looked amazing i'm oh, even arguably mm. better than rebels uh seeing the uh the stormtroopers yeah um but wait but yeah. there was one parallel to bring in to the ending like the very ending with the ship going down mm-hmm. how cool is it it kind of parallels what happens at the very beginning of uh 
Revenge of the Sith. Instead of it's, instead of the uh, Separatists, it's actually a, a clone ship going down in the oh. Circle of Bear. Not a happy landing. Not a, ha- not no. a happy landing. <laughs> that was a very somber landing. <laughs> yeah, it was. And Complete with funeral. It, yes, it pretty much. And, you know, it's great to see Maul escape because that's Maul. That's a Sith. That's a bad guy. Yeah. It's always been that way. And what, like, is, what is the Greek figure, mythical uh, figure that he, re- like, represents? Is it, uh, uh, the person who's doomed to roll the, the bowler up the hill for eternity? Oh, yeah. I forget is that it, person's is it, name. It's Oedipus or or no Maybe. Cicero. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I can take with the Bible. Sam, <laughs> I'm down Sam come, Whitmer, down the, yeah. come down off the mountain. Come up down off Mount Olympus and tell us what's what here, because I think oh, he's 40K. who he's who really I heard say it first. You know, it's like yeah, all is doomed to roll the up the, the you know how what, his Sam Whitmer. I can't do Sam Whitmer because I'm not handsome. Okay. He's probably said it more than once because I've heard it in some totally. Way. Yeah, and he said just, it a few times, man. Yeah, but, so that's the thing. He gets away, and then you you see these two survive this this crash. Oh, it's brutal. Mm-hmm. And uh, how they do it's pretty sick too, because they're it's shot. so crazy that the clones are so fixated on trying to kill Ahsoka that they don't even think about escaping. That's their programming, literally. And like the fact that the one of the best parts was Rex trying to like convince him, well, she is not a Jedi. You don't have to kill her. And yeah. I'm like, oh I was like, oh he's trying to he's trying to go for the drain yep. droid brain logic. Like <laughs> yeah. It worked. And he was like, like not, no. that doesn't compute uh, you're under arrest is that, would, y'all, would, you, would y'all but I'm not a crier, but would you all have cried if the clone said Roger Roger after a thing. Oh, <laughs> that would have been heavy. That would have been I don't heavy. know. Like I honestly, no. Honestly, I probably would have laughed. Yeah, <laughs> just, like, that would have been like, dang, that would have sold it for me. I, I don't Roger, know if that's Roger. Exactly the mm-hmm. route that, that they were going. Sure. Or just Roger that. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. Sorry, I'm an old man. No, that's okay. I probably would have laughed, honestly. Yeah. yeah. I would have been like, well. Okay, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, that's the thing, though. When when they did turn and they and obviously Rex was going against his logic. The best part was that I mean it was very George too. The break in humor before the real like heavy because the rest of the episode's not funny. There's no humor in it at all. Yeah, it was that moment. I don't like being called Commander anyway or whatever it was. And, oh, that um, was that was so like '90s action movie too. Like, I didn't like that anyway. <laughs> Awesome. He was like, I don't like being called commander anyway. Like, <laughs> and give then that line to Bruce Willis or Sylvester Stallone or something like <laughs> Steven Seagal. Great. I didn't like yeah. being a commander anyway. You know, like yeah. it's great. <laughs> and then you get the crash, and then of course you get kind of the the moment that really sells Ahsoka as a character. The fact that these people were trying so her, their hardest to kill her. And what does she do? She's buries her. Yeah. Literally gives him a tribute. No matter what, her and Rex, and Rex he, puts the shovel away. I didn't know there was a shovel till later. And I was like, "Oh my god!" I like haven't watched. Was, yeah, I need to watch that close more closely. Uh, oh, but, I think she would just like be able to use the force yeah, and, like get rid of the dirt, like you Ray. Know, you like lay yeah. all the bodies out and stuff. Yeah, and, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> push down. Hey, uh, deficiency. Like, yeah, I would. Um, yeah, but let's. I think y'all should talk about it. Oh, the, what? The big ending. The big, the big cold, bad. See, this is where, this is kind of where this episode is going to end up wrapping up anyway, because naturally it was something I a billion percent did not expect. I would have thought it yeah. on, on that shot of Ahsoka, you know, with her, with the graves. And there was that one shot where they go all the way to the, get the Jesse. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting chills that. thinking about the shots of the graves. Just the fact that Ahsoka she is Very the most good. Jedi to ever Jedi. She gave the men yeah. who were trying to kill her respect. Proper respectful burial for the <sighs> humans that they are. And the the moment. <gasps> Let's look Move at this, on. y'all. Look Move on. No, 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 no close up. <laughs> uh, just don't pee your pants. Yeah. No, yeah. No, <laughs> don't no. pee your pants. Not like Leo. Who do I look? Uh, I'm not that cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dude, I just love it. Peeing your pants so is cool. Sick. I'm Liam Neeson. So sick. <laughs> oh. so sick. <laughs> Amazing. All right, serious. Point. No, serious point. The Sorry. very ending of that whole episode was so unpredictable. And it showed it actually showed my favorite Star Wars ship. Star Wars ships. 
Um, and it was the the moment where they showed the Imperial shuttle go down. You're Lambda. like, you're like, wait a second, what is happening? Like, you got all the like mean? the probe droids going around. I I remember just being like, yo, where are we in this? Like, you know, obviously. It, it probably takes only like what, like a year to get to that point. Maybe. I don't know, dude. That's the thing that they haven't said anything about yeah, that. I, I thought it like was up to rebels, but right. I think it's. A, rebels, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. I, I think it's like a year or two before. Like, I think it's like a year at least. They have. After? Well, he's got. It talks about in the books how they have like the uniforms and stuff ready to go and all that, yeah. but then they're still flying around. They're not flying Tie Fighters for another couple of years or so. Five years yeah. later. They're still flying like the, the thing that sounds like a Tie Fighter in Revenge yeah, of the Sith, you know? Yeah, yeah. V wing, V wing, yeah. V wing. Well, still, to the point of it, we get we get the Imperial um, probe droid. Then we get, of course, those two <sighs> obvious Imperials, you know, and Snow then, Troopers, kind of, man. Hey, Snow Trooper. Oh, that was great. Those Snow Troopers. And then it got. Then you got the actual regular Troopers. And they both look, and then look who walks right in front of the frame. <laughs> well, didn't one of those those troopers? They had the pauldrons and like the tubes. Is they looked like straight up Battlefront One, like they when did. you're fighting on uh like Sullust and stuff, yeah, you yeah. know, like that poster that came with. It. Oh man, yeah. I still have that poster. I haven't put it up. Like, but I love that they're throwing in all these trooper designs, man. Like have oh. the snow troopers and all that, and then. Uh. I was like, show us what Vader looks like. Is it like, I, I don't know. Like, It was great. And you get that side shot thing. of him. And he walks up. And, you know, obviously Ahsoka had dropped that lightsaber <sighs> before. He walks up and he looks. And, like, just to think, like, that was such a big part of his life. And now he's just trying his hardest to fight against it. He goes in to pick it up. And he looks up. And it's Morai. How amazing <sighs> was that? That's when I kind of lost my shit. Because it was a Morai. It was the the symbol of rebels. You know, it was the yeah. there was what he saw when he went to Mortis. It was it was just everything conglomerating and you know, obviously Morai's in the world between worlds and mm-hmm. uh, oh it's just good. It's just good. And he looks up, then he ignites it, and that image of Vader with the black silhouette and the blue lightsaber coming out the side. Oh yeah. Oh, I probably one of the most iconic just- of of all the Clone Wars Absolutely. that he, I still can't believe that that's a part of Clone Wars right now. Yes. Like I'm still like that. Yes. Just that doesn't compute. No, it at just all. looked like one of the films, and it's just Darth Vader with a blue lightsaber. But yep. he gave that to Ahsoka. That was mm-hmm. a gift. Yep, to her that he was proud and excited to give her. Yep, you got to think about like what was going on in his head at that point also that it was do you guys think it was cool that was straight up a new hope vader too looking oh he had like the the, he didn't have the full like shoulder pads show and he had like the black like fabric over you know yeah and the red kind of looking lenses oh Uh, man yeah and you got to see it again you oh yeah you could almost see oh Mm. you could see could you really see the eyes yeah, you can, can you can see the eyes clear as day, just like in Rebels. So I was like, but it's the best part is it's silent. There's no words. Yeah, no. Words. That's the best part. No words. He doesn't go Ahsoka. He doesn't say anything. And like, it's completely up to you to think how he felt. And I'm sure in his head, it was maybe one more ending chapter for him. You know, like, oh, Ahsoka's dead. I don't have to worry about her anymore. Obviously, this is where she died. I mean, maybe to his knowledge, you know. Well, and when do you think that? takes place do you think it's before rebels like a couple years yeah, in yeah. or do you think that's like in the middle of rebels when he's hunting her down and he's like you know i gotta find clues and i don't know i kind of like that better though that like what you're saying that it's earlier because it's like okay she's because in rebels he's like the apprentice lives right like whenever like he feels her presence yeah. So, oh, yeah, maybe that is that moment where he, like, he thinks she's dead because she just yeah. dropped it. Yeah. I don't know. Oh. It's heavy. And the fact I that, like that better. Yeah. of the Ahsoka clone painted face Perfect ending. with him walking out, because it just represents everything he had to deal with. 
mm-hmm. Ahsoka, the Clone Wars. He's like at his final goodbye to all of it. And like, you know, Dave had to have had did that on purpose. I mean, obviously, I mean, of course it was intentional, but like such a heavy ending to end on. That is where the Clone Wars was supposed to end. You know, he was supposed to be the one that got everyone out of it, but he's the one that got everyone in it. Which is just mm. incredible. Oh, I love that. Whew. Heavy, heavy stuff here on the Bomb Ad Cast. Yeah. <laughs> there anything else before we close this episode out? <laughs> I think I could have used a couple more fart jokes just to ease the tension. Yeah. Always. You know? Always. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I think there's hope. Yeah, for yeah. more material. Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't think you do another Clone Wars season. Obviously, I don't. It, I don't know if you do Galaxy Advent, the Galaxy of Adventures, mm. like kind of style. I don't know what you do, but like this cast, from what I've been like, I've been kind of keeping up with like all like the little Zoom calls and stuff they've been doing. They love this show. They yeah, love they this character. Love They're all feeling pretty bittersweet about it ending. Ending. Mm-hmm. This is the true ending. I don't think you retcon the ending no nah, they will but, never do that no yeah uh, i don't know it's like did we get the full two years how long good point was ahsoka gone before wow. the trace and rafa arc yeah was that immediately i don't know there's a part of me that felt like that was immediately after yeah that but i'm just like well what about this other stuff like, where does yeah. um it's interesting and they have all those like i think they straight up said it right one of y'all told said it in the beginning they're like, yeah, we'll do. Um, we'll finish yeah, some of mean. those. Yeah, we'll finish some of those. Because they still got, it. they got the Boba Fett. They got some kind of uh, the Crystal Crisis. They've got like they got yeah, the Kyber there. Crystals on Utapau. Like they got Boba Fett's arc. They that's got, got a really keep- cool. If you've ever, if you've never watched that, Eric, it's got a great conversation between Obi Wan and Anakin about Ahsoka leaving. Oh, like no. Anakin mm. dealing with those emotions. It's a big. That's a big <laughs> moment in that arc. <laughs> Go. I, they might still be somewhere on StarWars.com or something. Go look them up. But uh, I think they will for sure be releasing like those in this big style animation, kind of like Siege of Mandalore, where it's like, yeah. here we're gonna release an arc as like a movie or a mini series. Yeah. You know, it's like it, yeah, it was part of Clone Wars, but here it is called the Law Two or something. Something. Yeah. Yeah. I want Boba Fett uh, versus Cad Bane. Uh, yeah, Cad Bane. Let's get the fate of Cad Bane, please. I want to know if he's still kicking. You know. You know. And then uh, this is the last thing I'll say about the shows. Mm. But I think there's a lot of promise with the Obi One series. Oh um, yes. Now. How, oh. And if the rewrites have anything to do with how this ended. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> you're not wrong make dave one of the execs uh which he will be and make sure that he oh, is yeah. working with deborah i mean he's he, shooting it with deborah he's, he's putting his spin on it and like have him be the um like you know make her favor and then make him yeah. baloney yeah like in the show yeah because there's so much you can do with everyone yeah there's so They're- much you can do. Oh, so much man and they added it really did add so much Four I episodes did. of the Clone Wars added so much to Star Wars. To that should be the biggest characters that you can still like. Of course, animated shows have always been something that I've loved, you love, Jerry love. People don't take them too serious, but that would be this this arc. I don't know. I was talking to my stepdad about it. I'm like, if they would have made this into a movie, it would have just been insane. You know what I mean? It would have. Yeah. It, for canon and it also does so much more mystery for canon it, it closed and opened so many doors and right i think that's the one thing that that's dave's always dave has been saying after this episode dropped like we wanted to make this as top tier as possible star wars and he damn did it he did it he did it, he did he did it. it. you we mad genius you yeah we do <laughs> you did it you did it you did it, you did it! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um they are seriously touting Filoni though now. You I mean, we've seen it with this Mandalorian like round it's table not- gallery oh, yeah. they've been doing. Oh 
my god and that he was like, on talked about he was on good morning america and um he was on something else he was on all of the networks that don't care about star wars all the time talking about the end of the clone wars and i don't know this man, man I'm telling you is george lucas's padawan okay yep. he's he's george yeah eric george george was watching that documentary with his dad and he's like who is this guy and you're like well i had to pause it i was just like well <laughs> pause <laughs> this is the baton like this yeah. is the, the guy that was george to. lucas never had sorry jet you know like, yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's like, like to me. and oh, it's heavy. That's the thing. It it Dave is is now being. It sounds weird. Groomed, not a good word, but Dave is now being like his name. Alex his name is Dave. showing, which is which is so cool for us. Yeah, since we've been so invested since I've been watching this since 2013. You know, and others have been watching it since 08. Seeing right. that name popped up, and one thing I will say, how great was the very end when Vader walks off from the from the helmet? Says created by George Lucas. Instantly, you're like, it's done. <sighs> final chapter. It's the final chapter George never got to really do, and I know he loved every second of it. Yeah. You know he did. I'm sure he helped write a little bit, but you know George was like, wow, Dave. You know, you ever wish we had like a video commentary of George Lucas watching? like the Anything. new stuff for the first time or like watching this i wish we could that like experience cool. george lucas experiencing star wars you know oh. like oh oh <laughs> ooh, oh dude oh, i've been telling okay. scott like from the last uh disney gallery they're like hyping george I'm like Bro, come back <laughs> well, man, we is, he, on the phone. Is, is he like gonna i mean so a whole bunch of footage from on the Mandalorian said they released that he, thing of the two of them talking mm -hmm. at whatever that was. I don't know what the event was. I still haven't watched that. I'm a bad fan. But Ooh, I need to watch, we'll watch it. it. We watched we'll watch it. it together and it was pretty There's damn been good. more George Lucas within the Star Wars like stratosphere in the last three weeks than there has been in the Ever. last like three years. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I feel like he's happy. I feel like he's pretty pleased with the. You know, he, he probably doesn't like the sequels, and that's fine. But yeah, like, he doesn't have to. I th you know, he was on set right. for Man, Solo. No. He, there's a picture of him on set with Rogue One. Oh, yeah. Uh, with Gareth Edwards. He's yeah. He showed up for every one of them. It's just they didn't always, like, put it out like, hey, George showed up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like. But, I feel Because I feel like he at least showed up for – he showed up for Last Jedi. Like, that was – that's a thing, right? He had a phone call. He had a phone call. You know, we have a phone oh, okay. call. George, I knew he talked um, with Ryan though, or something. Yeah, but, he did. He did. Which I would I love mean, to was, actually get his feelings on it because all we have is the Pierce Morgan or whatever, like, like white oh, slavers um, thing. And then now, like, is he like coming in like, oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Um, um, can I have visitation rights on the weekends? Yeah, um, yeah, yep, yes. Yeah. Charlie Rose. Every, was, every other weekend, a, maybe. I'll meet you in Costco way. parking lot. It was a last drop Star Wars, Wars off at Costco. What I will say is, if we get George back, it's heard here first by this man, and that would be pretty insane. Just like to have a written by George Lucas at the end of one of these movies, and no one knew Ghost writing it. I oh, mean, dude. It, was, it was almost it's almost like foreshadowing. And Kathy's like, George is the kind of person who watches other people direct and then wants to do it. And oh. I was just like, Yo, what imagine? are you trying to say here? <laughs> Why would you put that on, I, Disney? Yeah. Maybe, maybe a little too grabby wishy. Never know. I don't know. Can you I, imagine if George Legacy ended with like him doing one more Star Wars project? Star Wars movie? Oh, my God. Anyway, I, I would, would like love it. Oh, I, I would it. not love like, the Twitter sphere oh, with it. Like social media, oh. like bathe in it. it the anti-Disney like, people <laughs> would have a field day with George coming back. It's I, I I want it to I want it to I want that, of yeah. course. You know, yeah. It's just like I'm like yeah. I can't I I'm getting like shell shock like <laughs> uh, soy soy idea. milk. Ah. <laughs> uh. I drink <laughs> almond milk. Suckers, jokes on you. <laughs> We're at Anaheim and he just walks out on stage. He's like, um, by the way, uh, I'm doing. I, I'm writing. An, I'm, I'm directing the Ahsoka movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Comes out <laughs> celebration <laughs> next year. He would be the one or whatever. Like, would be like, 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 he pulls like, like a, like an Ian McDermott, and he goes like, yeah, uh, ro ro roll it again, 
Roll it again. <laughs> it's um, real. Anyway, boyos, this has been an amazing conversation. Um, let's get uh, Eric Almost some praise coming back on the show. Everyone, Thank look at this me. this beautiful face. Um, just know that this man is always eager to talk Star Wars. If you want to have him on your show, I'm sure he'd be more down to do it. But with that being said, Jerry, um, I guess I guess we can do plugs here. I don't know. I haven't thought about this yet. Video form. Um, if you haven't Ooh. listened to anyone else on this. Beyond the Blast Doors Network, give it a chance. Go listen to everyone. You got news on Thursday nights. You got kind of recaps on uh, on Friday nights with streaming Star Wars news, Beyond the Blast Doors Live. Monday is Andy and Josh doing Holo Chronicles, talking about all things collecting and merchandising. We also have Beyond the Blast Doors with Chin and Moran on Wednesday, and I forget. Postcards from the Galaxy's Edge, you mean? Oh, that was it. Postcards, sorry. Postcards from Galaxy's Edge. And uh, if you haven't yet... Go listen to every other show on this network. They're fantastic, okay? They, this is where more of the fanboy deep dive, but they got everything else for your Star Wars needs here in the Beyond the Blast Doors network. Uh, make sure you look at that logo down there. I think it's right by Jerry. Jerry, take your... Uh, there we go. Hey, good job, Jerry. Perfect. That is where you could find all of this. Everything great. Even the interview with Mac DeMarco in the vlog and everything Bomb Badcast, uh, Around the Galaxy, Holo Chronicles, uh, Postcards from Galaxy's Edge, Streaming Star Wars and Beyond the Blast Wars Live. Make sure you go check it all out. But, uh, Jerry, what should the wonderful Bomb Bad people do? Well, you should probably go uh, watch Shattered again and yes. like <laughs> cry into your pillow for the next five days. And you should also... Stay, uh, stay bombay.